Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending on where you're joining us from. Um, just going to share, Jay's going to share his screen and I will kick us off. Um, so welcome to the third uh, and final part of the boot camp for students. Maybe you've attended all three, maybe you've just watched the recording, or maybe you're just popping in for this third one. Whatever the, um, the occasion might be, we're super excited to have you here. So my name is Stephanie Nissen, so I oversee Elastic for Students and Educators that's putting on this boot camp today. Um, and so during this, this session, you'll be working with Jay, who is one of our um, advocates with the community team. And he'll be uh, walking you through kind of something you're actually going to create um, today, which is awesome. So you'll have that opportunity to, to use Elastic a little bit more. So if you haven't done so yet, um, you will need to sign up for Elastic Cloud, your instance. Um, so I think it was the link was in the emails and whatnot. But if you just haven't had an opportunity, go ahead and do so now. You can use the QR code that's posted. If you're a student, um, it will just reroute you if you're not a student to just our 14 day trial, but you'll need to use that for today. Um, just make sure when you're signing in, I think everyone did with your first and last, just so we know who you are and where you're coming from. Um, I don't think you have the ability to talk. So uh, if you do, just make sure you mute your mic um, and we will open it up for questions for sure. So um, you will have that opportunity. And, um, you know, my email is on there too, just the students in higher ed email. So if you have questions, it's also on the emails that you were sent. Please don't hesitate to reach out. If you want additional support, you want to talk about how you can work with Elastic a little bit more following this boot camp. Awesome. Um, just a heads up at the end of the boot camp, we will be raffling off the swag um, for those who sign up for all three uh, boot camp series. So I recognize that you are students. Um, you know, most of you are students or you're you know, students of life and you have other other, other obligations, um, including school. So we're not requiring that you physically attend um, each of these events, knowing that you have class conflicts and things like that. I had several of you email. So we're really going off of who signed up for all three, knowing that we'll send the recording. If you also signed up for all three, you also will receive a certificate at the end of this uh, to kind of um, post to your profile and make sure people know that you've completed this boot camp. Um, and we'll also keep you in mind for future events and keep you posted about what we're doing um, after this. So without further ado, I want to turn it over to my colleague, Jay. Um, my um, colleague Phoebe will also be um, monitoring the chat and so she'll be helping to kind of field questions and whatnot as we go through. Um, so feel free to post those. She did also let you know, make sure you're posting to all panelists and attendees so we can see what questions that you're posting, um, not just to panelists um, so that um, the whole group can see. But otherwise, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started. And Jay, why don't you go ahead and take it away? All right, thank you. Can everyone hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, as Stephanie mentioned, I'm Jay Miller. I'm a developer advocate for Elastic. Um, I am going to be doing my best to work off of the amazing work that Lisa has done in the first few sessions. Um, however, we're actually going to be deviating a little bit away from the traditional Elasticsearch Kibana stack, and we're going to talk about my personal favorite application in the elastic ecosystem which is app search and the reason i want to do this is one it's great that elastic provides so many opportunities but in the words of like my favorite internet meme sometimes ain't nobody got time for that we just have like an app that we want to put together we have an idea and we want to get it off the ground as fast as possible and for me as a developer advocate, one of the things that I actually did in my first few months at Elastic was put together this diversity program where we proactively sought out organizations that were catering to increasing diversity in tech um, all over the world. And the biggest issue that we ran into was finding organizations that cater to diversity in tech around the world. Um, they're, harder to find than you would think and my glasses are dirty and it's going to bother me so i'm just going to do that really quick uh but what we were able to do is quickly start building a list and kind of a, our own little mini database of different organizations and where they were and what they focused on and and kind of what groups that they catered to and we wanted to 
to build a site. Well, I wanted to build a site because I like building sites that just made it easy. And it wasn't just for me and it wasn't just for Elastic, but we wanted to make this available to everyone in the world. So uh, we're going to actually be going through the steps to recreate an app that I built. Um, I encourage you and invite you to follow along. You can build your own mini version if you want to go back and just find groups that are focused on your location, or if you want to take the lessons learned and just change the engine from one piece of data to another piece of data, we'll be able to do that. So without further ado, here is an amazing link. I've added it in the chat, so we're not going to rest on this too long. But if you want to follow along, I have my notes. These slides are built off of those exact same notes. So everything you see here, you will see in those notes as well as my you know, developer notes, little things that I've tried to figure out and have to resolve, you can actually comment on those notes as well. So if you have questions and they will always be up to date. So if I update my presentation a month from now and you go visit it, it will be the most up-to-date version and your comments will still be there and I can answer them and I can reach out and do all those fun things. So, I talked about Elastic App Search. Elastic App Search is the idea that we can take the power, the simplicity that is the Elastic Stack and create a full fledged package that gives you that traditional idea of search. And when I say traditional idea of search, I think the google.com, the yelp.com, the I have a little bar with a magnifying glass somewhere in there and I want to search for something and get a bunch of results back with some information supporting why I did that. And I like to think of App Search as simple, functional, and fast. And I actually have some, some nice little images that we're going to look at here. So first of all, simple. How simple? This simple. Everything is in JSON. Lisa has probably talked about JSON a lot in the first few series, but just like how Elasticsearch uses JSON and it has its all indexing and everything that's built on JSON. App Search uses the exact same schema, the exact same technology and the exact same focus. It's just that it also becomes with some nice clients that you can use like the Python and the Ruby client. And I think that there are going to be a node and PHP client added as well that are in development there, but it comes with some fully functional capabilities. And that doesn't just mean, oh, we added charts. It's no, when you think of a search site, when you think of, I have to make sure that people find the information that they are looking for. We don't want to have to have our users build all of that functionality. We want to provide as much of it as possible. And this system allows us to do this. It gives us analytics. It gives us the ability to test our queries and show scores. It gives us the ability to update our schema and add synonyms and curations. And we'll be talking about all of these things as we go along. So I didn't really have a good image for that one, but y'all know Elasticsearch is fast. I know Elasticsearch is fast. We gotta go fast. So Elasticsearch is fast. App Search is built on Elasticsearch. Therefore, um, hopefully, if we have done everything right, then App Search will also be fast. And we'll actually show you a way to even make it faster. So what are we building here? We are building this app that I built called diversityorgs.tech. I'm gonna click the link here and you're gonna watch the mouse go. And if you go to the little search bar, you type in San Diego, and then you scroll down and you get a bunch of different organizations that are focused on individual groups individual representations of folks out there, uh, different locations. And then when you click the link, it takes you over to their site. Um, we're not trying to rebuild and create like some big list or archive or database. We simply wanted to make it easy for people who identify as an underrepresented person in tech to find the location that they were looking for and to find results in their area. Now, I will say we've got a lot of folks here a lot of this data is hand curated by me. Uh, if there are organizations that are missing, there's a nice little link in the top that says, let us know, and we'll add that organization. Um, but we haven't forgotten about you. And if you can't find something, it certainly doesn't mean that there's nothing out there. It just means it hasn't been 
brought up to us yet. So you can be the person that makes the site more accessible and more visible for other folks. So I've gone through this sample and I'm in a second where I'm going to be switching things up and we're going to actually go into a browser and look at all of our data and actually start building this project out. So I am going to exit out of there. I'm going to see, do we have any questions yet? We don't have any questions that either tells me I'm doing a great job or I'm talking way too fast. Um, so let's go to my notes. All right. So the first step that we're going to do here is we're going to go to Elastic Cloud. Y'all, according to Lisa, have already done this. So we're not going to go through the act of creating an Elastic Cloud instance. Um, but we are going to look at Elastic Cloud and we're going to look at um, my instance and your instance. All you have to do is replace the name that I put in there. And there we go. So let's open a browser. I've already got it open here. Uh, I'll go back to deployments. So you should see something like this. This is the wrong instance of there we go. All right. So we see Elasticsearch service. See diversityorgs.tech. That is the app. We're actually going to be working on the exact instance that uh, is out there in the wild. So everybody is. Uh, let's cross our fingers and hope we don't break anything. I'm just kidding. I've done this a few times now, so hopefully I think we'll be safe. So if we click on diversityorgs.tech, where you would click on the organization or the um, enterprise search instance that you created, uh, you'll see all this information that is set up. And from there, you'll see all your different zones and all those great things. And I'm sure you're used to just finding Kibana and clicking launch. All right, so we see this big Elasticsearch window. We see my face in the corner. We're gonna get rid of that. Um, and then I also can see the chat down here. So feel free to stop me anytime and ask questions. I promise we will get through this. Um, but let's go back one. Let's go back one more. All right, so we have this Elasticsearch service when we logged into Elastic Cloud. Um, and I'm going to use my diversity orgs tech deployment here. We can see this. And again, as most folks are familiar with going to Kibana, we're actually going to go to Enterprise Search. Um, don't be afraid of the name. Enterprise Search is just what it's called. You don't have to be Microsoft or Amazon to, you know, actually have an enterprise application. All right. Are we still good? Can we still see? Last time I'm going to ask. Yes. We should see welcome to Elastic Enterprise Search. Awesome. Yep. All right. So from there, we're going to hit launch app search. Now, if you haven't added anything yet, this will look very, very different. It'll say, let's get started. And actually, let's Let's make this a little more similar. I'm going to go create a new engine. And you should see something like this, where you're taken to a create an engine screen. We can give it any name that we want. I'm going to name this student bootcamp. Why not? That way I know what it is. Now, when we hit create engine, it's going to say, hey, your engine's created. That's great. Now we need some data. Uh, pretty easy inside of that document that I, I get sent you a link to, there should be a JSON file. As I mentioned before, that JSON file, it's just JSON, uh, nothing special. But we're going to grab that and we're going to go back here and we're just going to say upload JSON file. Now, before I do this, of course, you could just paste your JSON in. You just copy and paste it if you had your own data that you wanted to use. Uh, you could use our API. Uh, the API is pretty snazzy, but uh, again, I'm, I try to keep it simple. Uh, we could even use a web crawler. If you were wanting to build a search application for like your personal website or your blog, maybe you don't have all the information and you just want to say, hey, here's the website, go crawl all the links on it. And it will do that and it will do it very, very well and very, very fast. But we have data we're just going to upload a JSON file. So I can take that. I'm going to drag and drop that JSON file onto here. And I am going to hit continue. All right. 
And just like that, we've added some documents and we added some fields and it takes us to this overview page where there's not much going on, but this is good because this gives me the ability to kind of explain how app search works. So you remember when I said that it's built on Elasticsearch? Well, it is. I could go to our Elasticsearch instance and later on I will, and you can see all of the individual indexes that it created. It's built a bunch of stuff for logging and analytics, and it's built you know something to hold our schema and all this stuff. Um, that said, it's designed to be fully functional within the application itself. So even though you could, there isn't really much of a reason to go into all of those other locations. But what we can do is we can see we, we added 494 documents. Each document is just like in, in Elasticsearch. It's just a document that has been added that's some JSON, that's some key value pairs that allow us to say the name of this organization is this. Um, someone mentioned Pylades Rock, so we'll say the name of this organization is Pylades Hamburg for Hamburg, Germany, um, or Pylades Tacoma for Tacoma, Washington. So, and then we'll add some more data to that, but we can actually see these documents. We can look here inside the documents tab on the side and we can actually go, let's again, in the spirit of Pylades, we just type in Pylades real quick. We'll get some entries. And if we view the document details by clicking this little arrow on the right side, we see all of this information, all of our JSON data right there. We have our ID, that's nice to have. Um, we can have a logo added. Uh, we have some links. We have um, the parent organization URL. We have, you know, the URL for Pilates Stockholm. Uh, and then we have kind of the diversity focus is for women in tech. Uh, the city is in Stockholm, Sweden. And then the technology focus is Python. So we can search on any of these things. Now, I know what you might be thinking, hey, it doesn't really make sense to search on URLs. And in fact, when I said earlier, how do we make our search faster? That's how we do it, is we take out the things that we don't necessarily wanna search on, but we still wanna present in our application. So at the bottom here under search settings, we're gonna to go to result settings. We're gonna click on that. And we're, we're you know, greeted with faster, richer results. Um, and what we're going to do right now, we can see our query performance is standard. Um, this is just based on like if I do a search, if I do a bunch of searches, how long will it take to get that information? I want it to be better than standard. So let's just start hacking away here. We don't want to have to search on the URL, so we can get rid of that. We don't want to have to search on the logo because that's just an image and we can't really do much with the image URL. And then we don't have, we don't want to search on the global parent organization URL. And just like that, we're already a little bit faster. We're up to good. Now, I mean, of course you can, you know, take all of these off, but then you're not searching against anything. So we're going to leave some, some very reasonable options on the parent organization, the name, uh, We'll do links as well, just because diversity focus, city and technology focus. And now we have good performance and we can actually test how good our search is. Again, this is all running Elasticsearch on the, in the background so that we don't have to think too much about that part. Uh, let's save that first and hit save, save results. Awesome. Now let's go to our query tester. This allows us to search for things and just see what comes up. Uh, this is really good. And, and if we want to see more information, we can hit query details and actually see all the things that are being searched against. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a couple of tests. Let's say we saw Germany here. So if I type in Germany, uh, we have Munich, we have Pilates, well, a bunch of Pilates events. Uh, we have Fraun Loop. We have um, the By Pocket organization from Berlin, and we have the Ready School of Berlin and Women Who Go. Sweet. All right, so Germany works. Germany's great, and of course we could type in Berlin and things like that, and it would show up as well. Uh, let's try WA for Washington. Okay, cool. 
that worked as well. We have Seattle, a bunch of Seattle. We have Washington, D.C. Um, so we can start to think of what's happening here. And let's actually look. And we have Waterloo. Oh, that was That's an interesting one. I did not expect that to pop up. So let's look at why Seattle, Washington popped up before Washington, D.C. And, and to be honest, it was kind of a known test. If I look at WA and I search for it, I get this thing called a score. Now, a score is just how relevant is the information that I typed based on what was searched. I mean, I guess a perfect score would be if every value on inside of these JSON documents said WA on them. If the city was WA, the global org was WA, the name was WA, yeah, it would be a really great score. So here we have Seattle, Washington, Seattle, Washington, and Seattle, Washington. Where can I access that URL that I'm demoing? Um, this is actually, we built this engine. This is a default engine. So if you created a new engine and you updated the, or sorry, if you uploaded the JSON file that was in the comments or in my notes, I think there's a link. Can we add that link again? Just in case. I'll just copy this. There you go. If you click on that link, it should take you to uh, the notes. Inside that notes is a JSON file. That JSON file has 500 documents in it. If you drag and drop that into a lat the, your app search instance, you should be right where we are. Okay. So if we look at Seattle WA, of course, WA is the exact word that we put in versus Washington. Washington WA is in Washington. Therefore, it got it hit, but it hit with a much lower score. So a score of 0.34. Uh, if we were to just say Washington, let's see what happens. All right. So now we get some different results, and that is Washington, D.C., Washington, D.C., and we look at the scores. We have scores of 4.44, um, and they continue to go down and down and down and down. And what we don't see are all of the entries that said W.A. So see, that that could be a problem, right? We, we, want, we want it to be you know reasonable. When someone says W.A., we hope that they mean Washington unless there's another reason for W.A., so what we can do is we can actually create a synonym. And a synonym is just like it is in, in grammar. It is this thing is like this other thing. So when you type one thing, it's like you were typing something else. Now, synonyms are both powerful and confusing and should be done very carefully. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, Washington, and I'm gonna actually add these in quotes, WA are the same thing. Now what that should do is that should make it, well, I think it just took my quotes out. Yeah, it took my quotes out. So can't really do much about that. So let's say, let's query test this again. I'm gonna type in WA. We get Seattle WA, and we see the score also changed, which not much we can do there. We still get Washington to show up in Washington, DC. But now when we type in Washington, well, if I can type, there we go. We should also get, and we're not for some reason. Did I do something wrong there? We should have also gotten WA. And I'm wondering if it's just because we're not yeah, we're only showing the size of 10, uh, which I cannot expand, but I can do, let me do something really quick. We're going to talk about this in a second. Actually, we're just going to try a different option because I don't want to spoil that yet. So Washington, it did work. I don't know why it's not showing. Oh, I do know why. There's a lot of entries in Washington. These are good problems. Let's try a harder one. 
Uh, everyone here knows of New York City, right? So we have New York. Let's look at NYC. These are the same. Uh, New York City, which all of my friends in Buffalo would be very mad at me for doing that. Um, and here's the really fun one. Harlem, Manhattan, Brooklyn, all of the different boroughs that are in New York. And this is this is actually a really good one because at no point in time, if I type in anything that looks like Bronx, would I ever get something that's listed as New York City unless we add a synonym. So let's go here. And again, I'll try this again. Oh, I have wrong one, query tester. There we go. Go to New York. We have some options. We say New York City. We should also have some options. And the big test here, look at these scores, 111. That's insane. Bronx. So now we're getting entries for, oh, if I type it again, there we go. Now we're getting entries for New York City when I type in Bronx. And of course, if I type in Bronx and there is one that mentioned the Bronx, it would show up at the top. It would have the highest score. But what this does is this means that now when someone is in Manhattan and they type in Manhattan, they're going to get access to objects in New York City. Uh, it, it's, it's a pretty awesome feeling to know that. Now, I talked about synonyms of, of one thing meaning another. What about when I really want something to stand out amongst all of the other uh, objects out there? So let's just type in Python and what do we get? We get PyLadies, which is great. We should get PyLadies. Do we only get PyLadies? Okay, uh, let's type in women in tech. Okay, so we get a bunch of options for women in tech now. Mostly women who go, which is, again, these are good problems. This is great. Now, what if we wanted to make sure that when we type in women in tech, instead of women who go being first, we want women who code to show up first. That's when we create what's called a curation. A curation is a way that you can tell your system, when I type something, I want this to be a priority. I want this to always be up front. Now, this is different from a thing that we'll talk about in a second called relevance tuning, where we say, you know, the city entry is more important than the name entry. We, we just say anytime that this is a search entry, we want this particular instance to always show up first. So if I type in, just type in women there, we'll hit continue. And it's going to say, hey, here, here's what came up organically, women who go. Uh, how about we promote some documents? Uh, this is one query. Um, the one thing I'm having a problem with here is I can't see the other queries here or the other pages here because there should be a lot of women who code, um, but I can't see them. So women code. Okay, cool. Um, it's an organic documents that are active for women. If we do code, we now see the women who code. So let's say we want these to be promoted. We want women who code Tokyo to be super important or even better. What if there's one that maybe we don't want black code collective to show up? when someone queries code and women, which I mean, again, this isn't something that we would necessarily want to do at the moment uh, in our live application, but we're just playing around with it and we can say, hey, you have a hidden result. So now when we type and I probably should have tested this first. But when we type and I can actually add results manually as well, I can say uh, women who code uh, Seattle. Do I not have one in Seattle? Uh-oh, we'll do Vancouver and we'll mark that one as well. Cool, so now when I go to this query tester and I say women 
and code, we can actually look at our results here in the query details and see our results. So, well, this is just the query. We can see the results of the query. We can't see the actual results pop up. And I think I'm fighting with our UI now, which makes me a little sad. Um, so I'm going to skip a step and we're going to actually look at this in terms of a real application. Let's go, let me just make sure that those curations are saved. Are they? They are, good. So again, we've done a lot of work here, but we want to actually have a site. We don't want to just sit here and play in our backend all day. How do we do that? Well, if we go to Reference UI, Reference UI is a way that Elasticsearch has given you the ability to package this as a standalone application. All we have to do at this point is define a few variables. So let's look at our title. That'll be the name. We want to filter by some things, right? So let's filter by diversity focus. Let's filter by city. Let's filter by technology focus. Um, we can sort by city. Why not? That sounds fun. And let's give this a URL. So when we hit generate preview, what we get here is this little applet that we have. Ah, and now it's working. You see, when I typed in women before we were getting all the women who go entries, but now at the very top, we have the two entries that I added, Women Who Code Tokyo and Women Who Code Vancouver. And that's all built in. But what's also built in is the ability to sort by the city uh, in alphabetical order. So this city was empty, which is why it came up as blank because it's an online group. And if we go in descending, we of course get Zurich, Switzerland. Again, not really sure how much people would do that, but you can. If we want to say only show me entries that are in the United Kingdom, we can now see all of the different organizations in the United Kingdom. And I said we wanted a, a standalone package, right? So once we're comfortable with this, if we wanted to go back, we could go back to configuration. We could go back into the query tester. We could you know, type some more stuff in and see you know, hey, is it working? Ah, now it's working. Women who code Tokyo, women who code Vancouver. I was being impatient. That's my fault. But I want to show two things before we, we jump off of this page. So I mentioned before relevance tuning. As we can see here, we have the phrase, you know, if I just type in women, we get women who go, women who code, and these things. We see these scores. The scores are actually a little low. Uh, these are one because one is the highest score that you can have, but these are going to be 0.5. If we wanted to make this better, what we could do is we could provide some relevance tuning. And that says, let's focus on the diversity focus first. Let's give that a little, little strength. And let's focus on the city a little bit more as well. That way, if someone is searching for Vancouver and Vancouver is in the city versus the name, it'll show up higher in the field because it's in the city, not the name. Because you might be in Victoria Island, British Columbia, and still say Vancouver area, but the two are somewhat different. So now when we save those changes and we go back to our query tester, let's see. We still get ones, but now we see some of these are higher. They were in the 0.5s, now they're in the 0.8s. Uh, and again, one should be about the highest you can go. You can boost it and it goes higher, but uh, think of it in terms of like one being, this is the exact match that we wanted. Same thing for if I type in code, we should get women who code, women Vancouver. Yeah, it, it works as we've done. So now I've got 20 minutes left. I'm gonna try to show you all of the stuff that you can do with this. So I mentioned reference UI. We added all of our stuff. That's not city, that's name. Uh, we added our stuff. I'm just gonna click some stuff here because it's not necessarily what we're gonna be doing. And again, you would sort these, you would set these the way that you want to sort them. 
Uh, and of course, the name and the URL you should really work with because when you generate that preview and you type in women who code, <coughs> when you click on the title, it's going to open the URL. So that's that's why you want to make sure that those are set. But these other ones you can adjust as as you'd like. If you want to go back and edit it, you can. But we're going to go over here to the top right where it says download zip package. And if we zip, we can just download that. I'm going to unzip this really quick. And let's just take a look at what this is. Let me make the screen a little bit larger and little got stuff all over the place. All right. So what we're looking at here, if you've, if you've ever done any type of uh, node JavaScript development is a react or a node environment, uh, package.json, it's kind of the big giveaway there. If we look at that, we're going to see uh, some information to tell us that it's a react app. So app search reference UI react. Uh, we can see that it depends on React Search UI uh, and some other things. It depends on the React DOM and the React scripts. And we have some build scripts already built for you. So at the end of the day, we've given you a complete React app. Now, I'm not going to try to run this here because it will try to install all of the node dependencies and Node and Zoom hate each other, and it never works for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you my diversity orgs project and we're going to ignore some stuff. We're going to actually hide some other stuff that way we don't mess anything up here. I'm going to hide the ignored files. There we go. I don't want to give out any keys today, but we're actually going to look at this diversity org react page here. And this is exactly what you got. Well, kind of. It's exactly what you got, but I did a couple of things. One, I added something called Tailwind. Tailwind, for those that, that don't know, is a way that you can style your web page and give it that, you know, relatively easy design language that makes it feel more consistent and make it look more like a traditional website. That's why when I go to, you know, I search diversity, orgs.tech and I go here, everything here is styled and nice and neat. That's, that is Tailwind doing all of the styling. But if you look hard enough, you can still see some of the relevance tuning there. You can still see some of the filter language there and you can still see uh, some of the technology there that's built in. Now I mentioned another thing, which is analytics. Analytics are built in to the project. So as I mentioned, everything that we do are analytics. I can actually go look at this. And this is, again, the student bootcamp project that we added. So this is a brand new engine. I made it on this call. We have 142 queries, uh, 11 total queries with no results and two clicks. Now, we did everything within the dashboard, within our testing. And you can actually see that you can see I typed in women, you know, five times I typed in code three times I, you know, I was typing Manhattan and it did some searches you type things, which is great. But we see all of these individual tags that say Swift type dashboard and Swift type query tester. This is using a thing called analytics tags, which just says, hey, all of this stuff happened on inside of our dashboard. So maybe when you're reporting on analytics, you filter that stuff out. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in the live document. So I've been doing a lot of work here last, last day, uh, testing some things. But if I go to my analytics, I can say I have a one that I built called admin, which is me adding and removing documents. I have uh, results and I have search. So if I just go to search, I can now see that there's been a difference. Looks like a lot of people were searching for stuff. Thank you for that. Um, but I can also see the results of those searches. I can say, okay, what, what was searched and what came up empty? So I have a lot of work to do in Frankfurt and Castle. I will do that. 
Same for Kansas, same for Missouri. I'm hoping that um, these are the ones that showed up with no results. That doesn't mean that they're, they don't exist. It just means I haven't added them. And then I can also come back and see, okay, what did have results but didn't result in clicks or what just didn't return clicks. And if I wanted to look, I could see all of the exact searches as they happen, when they happened, and how many results were available with each. So then we're able to go through that and start actually working to make our search better, adding those synonyms, adding those curations, doing some relevance tuning to make things a little more uh, searchable and discoverable. But that's not it. That's not the only place where we can get this information. Um, at the very beginning, I said that this was built on Elastic Cloud, right? So just as we were doing before um, that Lisa was doing, I actually have my version of diversityorgs.tech on a server. And that server, I am using a tool that we have called FileBeat, where I collect the metrics for that server. And instead of having to add something like Google Analytics to my site, I can just use FileBeat to look at the actual reporting from our site. And I'm just gonna say the last 24 hours. So this should be just the folks that have been on this call and people that are using the site outside of this. Getting some information, it's loading. This is actually a really small server, so forgive me if it's a little slow. So here is a look at all of the different points. See, I think we said we saw Washington there. I'm sure if I zoomed in a little bit, I think someone said Tacoma. So is that near, near Tacoma? Eh, it's in the area. Tacoma's in the bubble. Uh, so I'm sure we had Germany. So some that were in the Netherlands and Belgium and France, Denmark. So all of the folks that shouted out where they were from, we can see like, we can't see that it was you. Like I have no way to prove that it was you that did that search, but we can say, hey, there's a focus. There's a large focus of people that are searching in the Netherlands. And by large, I mean, there were eight people in the last 24 hours that searched for, or eight searches in the last 24 hours in the Netherlands. So maybe I should spend some of my time focusing on the Netherlands. Maybe I should focus on what's going on in France and Belgium and in Denmark and, and Ireland. But I could also see based on Nginx records, and I know this is getting like slightly creepy. Um, again, I promise I can't tie anybody's data to one particular person. I can only see based off of IP address and what's provided from the browser itself. But I can also get, you know, what operating system they're using, what version of operating system that they're using, as well as all of the different bits and bobs of, you know, Firefox, Safari, Chrome. You can see Chrome version 10, Chrome version 8, I'm oh, sorry, 89, 88, 83, 49. Whoever's running 49, I'm going to need you to update Chrome, please. Um, and we can you can start to build a profile and you can look and see over the last 90 days, you know, how does that number change? Where are people searching from? Where are they going? What's the breakdown from all of the different locations that you're working on? And, and we can see that we can see like, okay, where were the spikes? What happened to cause those spikes? We can start asking questions that makes our search data more insightful instead of just saying, I'm gonna add a bunch of data and let people search on it. We can now say, I'm gonna add a bunch of data and I can visualize what's happening with that data and how people are searching on it. And again, this is all using the Elastic Stack. This is App Search running as the main engine of the site. This is that React site that we exported from App Search being hosted on an engine and that engine being referenced by our file beat tools. And of course, Elastic, you know, we try to make it helpful for everyone. We give you all the instructions you need to set that up and to you just have to copy and paste some lines of code onto your server, hit OK, and then you start to see those entries as they're coming in. And from there, 
you're able to build whatever site you want. Now, I build a diversity site because diversity is something that's important to me. I've seen this run shop, you know, shops, e-commerce platforms. I've seen this run individual applications. You could build your own version of Yelp. I have a friend that, you know, during COVID times actually used uh, this tool. They use Site Search at the time. It was called Site Search to build like what shopping centers are open in their area, uh, testing facilities and vaccination sites and things like that before uh, some of the infrastructure and logistics were put in place. And it's amazing to see what's possible with what we started with, which if you have forgotten in the hour of me talking was just this simple JSON. So that being said, I am going to jump back into my presentation and we're going to look at the very last slides and we're going to talk about some of the things that you can do. Can people see the last slide? I know it, it's been, acting kind of crazy. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so some of the things that you can do, you can create those custom views as I showed you before it's using things like tailwind. It's understanding how react works and building those custom views that allow you to take your site from looking like the traditional search view and making it look like, you know, a, a regular site. I, it's funny. I didn't show this, but a lot of folks will look at the site and a lot of like the bots out there that'll try to hack your site. You'll check, they'll check the site to see if it's available. And then they'll try like all the Squarespace like attacks and all the WordPress attacks and all those things that, to see if I've left something open. But of course I didn't because it's not running any of those. It's running a react site. Everything is locked behind just API calls. So there's no security issues that I have to be afraid of. Um, again, you can build those custom curations that allow people to find those harder to discover uh, search results. And then, of course, if you want to, you can make your app publicly available using something like Vercel or Netlify. And then from there, you just tell it to build and it's available. It's on the web. You give it a domain and you're good to go. Um, this site originally was hosted on Vercel until uh, I wanted to get those analytics and then I put it on my own server. Uh, and then last but not least, again, the hardest part in my opinion of doing this is discovering the content that you want to add. We have a crawler. This is the only company that I know of that allows you to use the crawler for free. So if, I mean, obviously we're using Elastic Cloud. So once your trial runs out, you would have to pay for the, you know, resources that you consume, but just like with the Elastic Stack and all the tools that are in it, you can download this for free on the website, elastic.co. You download it, you have to host it yourself, but that includes a crawler. So your blog, you can crawl your blog and build a search engine for your blog. You can build a search engine for, uh, if you have, you know, someone has a menu uh, or a restaurant or something, you could build a search engine for them that allows people to search for options and get reviews and all those great things. And last but not least, if you do choose to build something with App Search, I want to know. I want to be your biggest fan and I want to share it with everybody in the Elastic community and help it grow and help you learn more from the amazing community that we have. So that said, you can tweet at me at KJY Miller. I'm also on LinkedIn under the same name. And if you want more information, I'm here to answer questions now, but uh, if you have questions in the future, you can go to this document. You can check out elastic.co slash app search. And of course, you can always join our community discuss forum. That said, I that wraps up my presentation. I can stop sharing. And okay. if there are any questions, yeah. I am available to answer them. Well, cool. Well, while people are thinking about their questions, first of all, thank you, Jay. Um, I know that, you know, as there are with everything, always like some technical glitches, but I think it was fantastic. Um, so um, I did, however, just want to take the next like two or three minutes just to do the drawing for the swag. Um, 
So you may win if you're here, you may not. Um, but um, just know we'll, we look forward to hosting more events like this in the future. So obviously more opportunities to win. Um, but I am going to share my screen, with this handy dandy little wheel of names. And so these, these names include um, everyone who signed up for all three workshops. Um, so if you just signed up for one or just, or just attending today, your name's probably not going to be on here. Um, but like I said, don't worry, there'll be plenty more opportunities to win. So without further ado, I'll spin the wheel. Super fun. We'll see who. It looks like Justina won the first. We'll have three total. So Justina, I am not sure if you are here or not, or if when you watch this recording, congratulations. I'll reach out and get your information. And let's remove her. And let's do it again. You know, the anticipation is killing everybody, I know. And then we have, looks like Inna Wendell. So you are our second winner. And we'll do the third winner. And here we go. And Daniela, Benicio. So congratulations. I apologize if you didn't win. Um, but like I said, um, there'll be more opportunities. Um, and you know, um, we hope that you attend and, and take advantage of those. I will stop sharing my screen. Um, so following this, just to kind of recap, I'll be sending an email with the recording and the presentation that Jay gave today, um, as well as recordings to the other two. Um, it'll also have some specific instructions about the certificate you'll receive for attending the boot camp, and really just information about how you can kind of continue to work with us um, and and be connected to Elastic. So you know, we really encourage you to kind of share your achievement. You you put in the work of attending. We know school is busy. We know life is busy and we just really appreciate you kind of um, exploring Elastic with us and, and seeing what it can do for you and keep your eye out for future boot camps and future workshops um, that are geared towards students. So um, it also my information so you can reach out with any questions, but there are no other. We, we do have a question oh, yes, I see. that's in the Q&A. Um, we have an anonymous attendee. Uh, thank you for attending uh, yes. that asks, what's the difference between using the ordinary Elastic search and app search um i should probably organize my thoughts on this just a second so app search is using elastic search behind the scenes uh, the biggest difference that you're going to get when you're searching for information is you have to build your own analytics chain you have to build your own synonyms chain you have to build your own uh curations and logging and I don't know if Lisa covered tools like painless scripting, but you can build those. But what winds up happening is your queries start to get extremely complicated. They get extremely long and it becomes really hard to manage over time. So when you use a tool like app search, it has all of those adjustments built in so that when you start searching and you provide op ways for people to filter out data, when you provide ways for people to sort data and provide relevance tuning, you no longer have to worry about how do I build those things. You can just focus on grabbing data, presenting it, and then using kind of the built-in GUI to make those adjustments and fine tunings that are needed, knowing that app search behind the scenes is going to be doing all of the painless scripting and all the bucket stuff and like aggregations and tooling and things like that. It's doing all of that behind the scenes to make it as visible and as relevant as possible to you. When should you use Elasticsearch over App Search? Uh, there's a, a few opportunities. If you are, well, one, if you don't need a React app or if you don't have the traditional um, website with a search bar and some data, then app search isn't going to solve a problem there. If you are looking at large amounts of data, um, we remember that app search is built on top of elastic search. So if you have millions and millions and millions and millions of records, and you want to be able to search that information relatively fast, it is going to start to slow down the more information you add. Now, of course, everything is scalable. So 
you can scale it up to perform better. And again, we're not talking about hundreds, like 500 documents is nothing. Uh, 5,000 documents is nothing. 100,000 documents, not really that much either. But when you start looking at things like database tracking or even something like file search where it's analyzing tens of thousands of records a day at scale, that's when you want to say, okay, maybe I shouldn't make this an app search um, application. And it's also a good opportunity to say that like app search is designed for presenting that information via the web. Uh, there are APIs that allow you to kind of access the app search tools on the back end. Again, those clients, the Python client, the Ruby client, um, the admin tool that I included, I commented on a post in the chat. Um, my, this project is open source. It's MIT licensed. You can go in if you want to make diversityorgs.tech better. I am more than happy to have someone fork this project and, um, you know, add a contribution to it. But if I were indexing like all of the meeting information, every single event that each of these organizations had, I probably wouldn't put that into app search. I would put that in something like Elasticsearch because at scale, it's just going to be too much data to really be able to work with in a clean way. Or maybe I splinter it off and have it as a separate engine within app search. So then you have multiple engines running at the same time which is doable, but again, of course, it'll add complexity to your project. Well, thanks so much, Jay. And thanks once again for everyone attending. Have a wonderful rest of your week and keep your eye out for the email for the recording and for your certificate. Um, and we look forward to working with you in the future.